Okay. Okay. All right. Welcome to another episode of Closers or Losers. My name is Jeremy Miner, Chairman and Founder of Seven Level. Here's my business partner, CEO, Matt Ryder, working from the home office today, not even in the office today, I see. See, I, I like home it. This is the way to go. You, your, your wife's happy, your kid's happy, you're at home working today. All right. So yeah, today man. we're going to talk about a subject that a lot of you know a lot of times we'll talk about subjects that just people hit us up in our Facebook groups or IG or you know LinkedIn maybe even YouTube and we just kind of bring them here to you what you want to know and this is about the untold truth about your first year in sales what what's what's really the untold truth if you're getting into sales you're brand new to sales like what can you expect what's real what's not real Matt, I'm going to start off with you with that question. What's what's some of the things that you wish you would have known your first year in sales? And maybe everybody watch, watching and listening to us can identify with what we're going to talk about. Here's a couple of things. The first thing is that um, I would have I would have gotten development sooner. I would I would have started off before I ever sold anything, getting some sort of process, some training in mind. But a lot of people, because a lot of salespeople, you know, they push that down the road. You know, well, a lot of unsuccessful people push that down the road because they don't know any better. Like, well, after I get the job, then I'll learn how to sell. Yeah, well, I mean, like you know, some people want to jump out of the plane, packing the parachute on the way down. Some want to strap it on and then jump out. You know, so that analogy I think works perfectly. I had no idea what I was doing. And so it made it. And even though, dude, I was ex special forces, very confident person. Yeah. Like I, I was so, I guess, uh, for lack of a better word, scared. Okay. Like it, it was like I just I mean, I didn't dude, know what I was you're, doing. You're like special forces, like shooting yeah. bad guys, like crazy. But stuff. I was confident in doing that. I was trained how to do that. See, I was trained how to shoot people before I ever had to go and shoot people. That's so I like good. it. You know, so I did a lot of training and then I was so competent by the time I went and did the real thing that the real thing was like, do, 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 do. It was easy, you know? right? Yeah. I think, I think but, that's a good yeah. analogy because, you know, if you're a neurosurgeon, well, to get the jobs in neurosurgeon, you have to be trained first. You have to be able to know what to do when you get into the surgery. If you're in the military, you obviously want to know how to protect yourself and, and shoot the bad guys before you get out there in the battlefield. If you're in sales... You probably want to learn how to sell before you get on that first home call so you actually succeed. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. There is that. The other thing is like I wouldn't have listened to the people who were like, no, 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 this is different. Because like having sold in a few different industries now, like it's just the same. You're just talking to people. Yeah. You know, there are obviously nuances and all that kind of stuff, but like sales is sales is sales. Yeah. Whether you're selling enterprise Slack, yeah. you know, or you're selling fitness, it's all about finding a problem, solving the problem. And creating a connection with the person that you're talking to so that yeah. you can you know get a little bit of vulnerability from them and actually really figure out if what you can do solves it and so like i think it would be just like you know hey guys like just chill out get uh -huh. some training yeah. realize that like you're not in a tougher situation than anybody else <laughs> your leads are not harder your industry yeah. is not harder it's it, like don't listen to any of that crap because yeah. that makes you not try like one of the best um like one of the best ways that I that I thought about it was was that like you know there in, in every city there was a restaurant owner during COVID that crushed it. Sure. Yeah. You know because that person was like, oh, okay, this is a problem. It's not my fault, but it is my problem. I have to figure I, out how to solve this. I love that saying that you said. It's hey, it's not it, it's not your fault, but damn sure is your problem. Yeah. So then like those are the key things, and then it would have just been like probably giving myself a break, realize that you know if I think. Oh, and tracking my data because I think from what I see from young salespeople is they compare themselves to experienced salespeople thinking they should yeah. be able to emulate the numbers yeah. and that takes time. So yeah. if you think you should be able to close at 50%, yeah. then you're going to be constantly frustrated every time every other person says no. But in reality, you're probably more of a 10% person and you should be happy yeah. when each person says yes. Yeah. And I, I think that's, I think you brought up an excellent point because, you know, we even have, you know, we have account executives in our company. We've got a lot of young people, right? Because we train them the right way from the very beginning. And we have one guy on our team that's, you know, he's not even 18 yet. We had to, he yeah. got hired. He's one of our clients, Inner Circle's parents got him into our advanced Inner he Circle. He made like 20 something thousand last month, 25. He, he collected 260,000 in cash. Yeah, and... yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, he'll always come up to me like, hey, man, like, I'm only making like 25 grand a month. Like, 
what am I doing wrong? Like, I just, you know, like, you know, I mean, your, your second year in sales, how much did you make your second year in sales? And I was like, well, I made this. And he's like, yeah, man, I'm just not quite there. I'm not noticing. I'm like, bro, my second year in sales was like 22, 23. You're freaking 17. Like you're 17 and you're on pace to make over 300,000 in commissions this year. Like you're doing awesome. Like what other 17 year old kid is making 300 grand a year in commissions in a sales job? Like nobody's even in sales when they're 17, right? And yeah. so sometimes I think that's a good point is like, look, as you get older and as you get more skills and as you get more just experience and the ins and outs just come to you that you can't have when you've only been in sales one or two years and you're really, really young, you're just not going to have yeah. the same experience as somebody that's been there 5, 10, 15, 20 plus years. Sometimes you just have to hear a lot of conversations. Yeah. I you know. And especially if you're young, young, you haven't had that many interactions with people compared to a 35 year old. Yeah. So your ability to interpret people's tonality and their body language, just not as good inherently because you haven't, you just haven't been there. Now you can be a freak. Like, you know, that, that kid's amazing at sales. Like yeah. he's incredible. But when he's 35, he'll be, whoa. Uh, he'll, he'll be making four times, five times what he's making now. For sure. Yeah, exactly. And it's, and a lot of it is because like, maybe even his skill set doesn't, it will progress a lot better, yeah. but his will be incredible. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I, th I think that's, uh, I think that's hundred percent right. A couple of things that I uh, I'm told truth. Yeah, I can hear you. Couple of things that I would change, you know, if I if I went back to my first year, I, I think probably one of the biggest things that I just learned by experience was not to take people's advice about selling that we're not making a ton of money as a salesperson themselves. Yeah. <laughs> I did that really bad my first year. You know, the manager was like, "You got to say this. You got to do this." And then it took me probably about four or five months of following that person's advice. And I started asking questions about how good they were at sales to find out they weren't even really that great at sales. They got promoted to being a manager because they were better at managing people. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I shouldn't have taken his advice because he he was a good salesperson, but he wasn't great. So sometimes yeah, yeah. when you first get into sales, like you don't know who to trust, right? Like you, you, you see this book in Barnes and Noble and you're like, oh my gosh, this this book is so good. Like, oh my gosh, this, this guy is so awesome. And you don't realize that this guy in the book hasn't even sold anything for, I'm just making it up, 30 years. Well, things have changed, right? Yeah. In 30 years, right? I didn't have social media. It's not that yeah. we didn't live in an information age like we do now 30 years ago. And so you still, not just a random book. I'm not specializing in that author or anything, but um, you, you, sometimes you take advice from people who haven't sold for decades in some of these books. Yeah. Right? Or people who sold in one industry, barely made 20 grand a month. And now they're a sales coach. I mean, that's really, really common. That's really common, uh, right? So you know a few people actually. We, we know who, a few uh, people that were on our step. Like one, one of the reasons why, like I really, like I really dug deep and I pushed really hard to, to get to become a seven figure per year sales rep, like as a pure sales rep, not as a business owner, as a pure sales he's rep. He's talking about make... straight commissions. He's not talking yeah. about it. He, he sold a million dollars. Like he made a million dollars in commissions as a rep. Yeah. It's because like, as I was coming on to, to work with you, I was like, man, I like, if I'm going to be a sales guy yeah. selling sales reps, or if I'm going to run a sales training company, like I better have been a pretty successful person in sales. Otherwise, like, what am I doing? Yeah. Because you know? people like people that you train they're the, because they're not going to they're not going to learn everything you know. They just won't. Like I could train someone for 10 years straight and they are not going to know any PQ like I know. They just won't. Yeah. Right. Now they they might know it a different way or, or something like that, but they're not going to retain all the crooks and nannies and everything hundred percent. But if I can even help them get 50% of what I know, they can make over a million dollars a year in commission. So in my yeah. mind as a salesperson, like I had a 17 year sales career. I was in four different industries, two that were business to business, B2B, and two that were B2C. That's how I kind of know both like the ins and outs, right? Uh, made a lot of money, obviously, you know, millions of dollars a year in commissions. And if I looked back and I was like, if I looked back at myself and said like, hey, after, after a year and a half of me being in sales, I'm going to start a sales training company. I wouldn't be here today. I would have bombed because I wouldn't have had the yeah. experience. I wouldn't have had the know-how to go outside of my industry that I was selling in to be able to train any industry that's ever around like I do now. So you really my first 10 years in sales, my best year was 200K. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so 10 years. If you're if you're learning from a sales trainer that their best year was 200 or 250000 dollars a year, 
and you're only going to maybe attain half of what they know, well, you're going to make half of what they made. Yeah. Right? You're not, how are you going to make more? Yeah. It wasn't until I started working with you that I was like, I think like I was on track to make about 300. Yeah. Right. I was probably on track for three, for 280, 300. Yeah. Um, Cause I was getting better. Yeah. Uh, and I was selling sort of more high. T- I was selling really, really low ticket for yeah. a, like a long time. Yeah. Very high volume, very low ticket. Yeah. 80K a year salary with a $22 per sale commission. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, right. That was, you know, and I had to hit a quota to get commission. So, um, <laughs> That was like ten years, yeah. right? Basically, um, and then from there, when I moved into a more a more expensive space, I started like, oh, well, that actually served me pretty well. I was on track to make sort of 250, 300. Then from there, I met you, and I made seven figures in a year. Yeah. But like, you know, a lot of young sales guys they go, yeah, no, but you made seven figures. I was like, okay, if you did it twice as fast as me, yeah. would you be happy with that? Sweet. I was like, congratulations, you have five years. Yeah, exactly. You got you got yeah. some time. And that's what we see from a lot of our reps and even even reps yeah. that come into our training programs that are brand new. They're like, why am I not making 700,000 a year yet? Well, this is your first year in sales. There's things you 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 haven't learned from us yet. It takes a while to acquire those type of skill sets. So if I would have went back, that's one thing I would have learned is like, hey, if I could have had a magic ball or like a genie, I rubbed a lamp and, and had three wishes. And I said, who are the top three people that I need to learn sales from to make X, Y, Z dollars? And they would have told me I would have wasted, I would have not wasted so much time learning from people that weren't really that good. Even sales trainers in books behind me. You know, I'd find out like, oh, they never even sold anything. They were just a professor. Oh, well, so the theory is good, but they never were in the trenches though. So like you can't fully understand it until you're in the trenches. You just can't, right? You can do yeah. data and studies and 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 all that kind of stuff. And that helps before you get in the trenches and you know the ins and you just don't know the ins and outs. So that's one thing I would have changed. Another thing I would have changed um, if I thought about it is... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Not. Uh, I was talking about the attitude that you had in your first year versus what you had in like year five. Yeah. Well, right? I'd say the attitude I had in my first year was like I didn't know what what attitude was I supposed to have, and nobody really taught me what attitude I was supposed to have. I just yeah. kind of went with the crowd. I was like one of the sheep that just kind of went to the slaughter without because everybody <laughs> else was everybody was walking to the slaughter, so I just kept walking around. So if I would have known like who to hang out with. Like, you know, the company okay. that I with. What my, do you mean by that? What do you mean? Well, so like the first year that I was um, in sales, I got a, you know, straight commission. Home, I sold home security systems door to door. I was 21, 22. I was still in college. I was in my junior, senior year, right in that range. And I think that company had maybe 250 reps because they'd only been around a couple of years. They had a couple hundred reps. Um, and eventually, you know, they went to have, you know, thousands of reps as, as they'd grown. Yeah, yeah. But it was just hanging around, you know, other people that got hired that I kind of like had fun with, but didn't realize that maybe they weren't the best to hang out with because they weren't going to really train me the best. Right. Okay. So if I would have known like, oh, here's the top three salespeople, I just need to hang out with these three people all the time so I yeah. can learn what they do. That would have catapulted me much quicker than me having to like, quite literally learn it on my own through trial and error. That's one thing. That makes I total sense. For sure. I, I see a lot of sales. See a lot of salespeople, especially when I got into like you know B2B sales, I was working in an office environment. I would see a lot of the the low performing or average salespeople. Most of the time they were in the break rooms or out in the hallway complaining to each other about how their leads were broke, had bad mindsets. Whereas I never went out there. I was always in my office, like closing deals, making a ton of money. And I was calling the same time. You must've got the easy leads. You must've got the easy leads. They were right? giving me all the pink leads, right? You know, yeah. I was even, I was even. That's a big one, coffee. actually. I was allowed to drink coffee. So yeah, I was like coming, out. coming up with reasons or excuses in your own brain as to why other people are outperforming you. And it's just probably a skill set and a work ethic issue is a big one. Like I put up a post recently on Facebook and it was like, it was a stacked calendar where it was back to back to back to back. I'm not sure if you saw it. And it was like, it was one of our sales reps. And I was like, people out there calling me crazy for making people do $600 a day, but their calendars look like this. So, you know, whatever, I'm going to keep doing my thing. And people are like, $600 a day is impossible. I was like, do you really want to do the math? Yeah. And seven hours work with $600 and that'll book you 12 to 15 sales calls every single day. Obviously you have to have like the numbers to call, but like we do. Yeah. So it's like, that's, that's not quite a full-time job. So if your guys aren't doing that and they're doing a hundred dollars a day, what are they doing now? What if they're straight the cold the calls, a little yeah. bit different, right? But like do the work. 
Yeah. And then it's like, well, my guys got can't get that. It's like, okay, either they're not working hard enough. You're a bad manager. They don't have the correct skill set. So fix one of those three things, if not all of them. Just fix yeah. it. Hundred you know? percent. Yeah, hundred. I'm not as good sales as you are. I know that. Yeah. I also don't need to be. Yeah. Right. Anymore, which is why, like, I still do development, but nowhere near when I was full time selling, sure. because I've hit a point where, like, for me, I don't need to get that much better. <laughs> you know, like. With the job that I have now, I'm good enough. Yeah, you're you the, know? So, you're running the you're running the company. You're not on yeah, sales. I'm good enough. Like I can help on a sales, sales call, I can close someone. Started, but that, that was only for a couple of months and that, that went by pretty quick as we see. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I did it. I, I made a sale yesterday. You did? You probably what did you do it through DMs? Yeah, sold any PQ two point oh because of DMs. Messages and they they signed a, a B2B agreement or something for seven years. Yeah, I did seventeen thousand once over DM. You did, didn't you? Paid, paid in full, seventeen thousand payment link done over DM. Yeah. Never hopped on a call. Need calls. There you go. I love yeah. it. Yeah. So I think I think you hit the head. It's like especially when you're in your first year. So if you're listening to us right now, you're watching me and Matt. Be very careful who you associate yourself with, especially the first year. As you're learning, yep. you want to be around people who are really serious about their profession, that they are learning as well. They are wanting to improve. Even if they're already doing well, they're wanting to get better. That's who you want to learn from. Because when you go into the break room, you're like, hey, I just got this objection. The prospect says like, you know, uh, I, I need to pray about it. Like, what would you guys do? And and they go around and they say, this is what I say. This is what I say. This is what I'd say. Then I'd be like, even if they weren't even doing as good as me, which nobody was, I'd be like, uh, I'd, I'd sit there and analyze it and be like, ah, oh, like, oh, if they change that word and if they ask that second instead of first, and oh, that was really good, but his tone was really off. So if I was more, if I had more empathy when I said that, oh, that was actually a really good response, but I'd probably ask it this way and it'd give me ideas. And then boom, I just go in and be like, oh yeah, that's much easier to do that way. And I was even asking people who weren't doing as well, but I was seeing what they were doing. I was hearing what they're doing. And some of it was good, but just some of the words were off or the way they asked it was off. But you got a little concept. Yeah. yeah, I had the concept and I just tweaked it. And then it was like, oh, this is how it works. So you want to get around other people and ask them questions every day. Don't like, don't be as a first year rep, don't be shy to go ask the big boys and girls that are, yeah. are crushing it, what they're doing, like, and ask them like, what are you saying? So when the prospect says this, what do you say? And get it, be specific. Don't get, let them give you like a little overview or like, oh, I just, you know, I just, I say something like this. Well, okay. Well, what do you really say if they say this? You know, so I, I did that all the time, even with all the reps in the companies, because I was always the number one guy that weren't even doing 20% of what I was doing, but I was learning from them all the time. I was constantly yeah. learning. And they the probably you can do is do if, if you someone's doing really good, you can offer stuff like, hey, I'll do your follow up for you for a month if you help me. Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? Like, hey, do you have any old leads that I can go after? Or like, you know what I mean? Like, and like we can split the commission. Like, but can you help me kind of design a structure? that really, really, that, you know, that gets me better. And like, that's a, that's a good exchange of value. You know yeah, what I mean? I and you're going to be learning and be mentored by somebody. That's why I like the real estate, real estate, I think as an industry is bad at sales. However, they have that side of things pretty well done, yeah. which is where like, they have that like inbuilt mentoring uh, of people who are doing well in the building of a team. You know yeah. what I mean? It's I, a little bit of an MLM actually. <laughs> kind of is. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Kind of like a network marketing. Because it kind of goes down. Like yeah, you can I go down a few layers. Yeah. What's yeah. What, before we end here? What's like one last thing you would change your first year if you if you thought about it, if you went back in time? What would you have done differently as well? Well, I think actually the one of the things that I would keep the same okay. is I would stay high volume. High volume. Um, I, I wouldn't want to sell low volume, high ticket straight away. Uh -huh. I would like my recommendation would be like the thing with door knocking is you're just unlimited doors, right? True. Doors as far as I can see. With yeah. fitness and just calling leads, yeah. I had so many sales interactions yeah. that my learning curve was really steep. But if I was only hopping on three calls a day, yeah, like dude, I was doing, I was having thirty conversations a day, forty conversations. Like, was constantly like tweaking, changing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think. So that's I think. A yeah, high volume. I think and low, low ticket as well. To be honest, like lower ticket or at least something that like the leads are not expensive because when it's the leads are expensive is when you're going to be expected to perform immediately. And I don't think that kind of pressure is, is, uh, is, um, healthy for a new salesperson. Yeah. And that's like, like I said, that's why so many people come to us even before they get a sales job and they come in and, you know, get into yeah. you 2.0 or advanced 3.0 or an IC because they want to acquire the skills. So when they go land the job a month later, they actually succeed the first week, the first month, instead of getting fired, 
like, you know, unsuccessful salespeople do that think they're just going to learn it after they get the job, which is yeah. Like here's, a, here's a random question. Have you ever helped a lawyer do like a closing remarks or like an opening? An open, an attorney doing an opening? Possibly. I don't know. I know we have attorneys in our, in some of our training programs because I've seen their testimonials, but I, I don't know if like specifically we've ever trained like a law firm how to do that. There's be interesting individual attorneys. What You must have asked that for a reason. Oh, I was just thinking like, cause I know um, we're working with a couple of law firms at the moment, but like more for like their like internal stuff and, you know, being able to sell to, you know, um, sort of more high level retainers and stuff like that. Yeah. But I, I just was thinking, I was wondering if it would work in a court. I'm sure we could come up with something. Yes. Yeah. The only yeah. industry we don't train right now is underwater basket weaving. So we're cracking it. I've got the marketing knows, campaigns out. If anybody knows some contacts in the underwater basket weaving industry. Yeah. It's the only industry we have not cracked and not yeah. trained yet. And where should they send these people to find out more about us yeah. if they so, are hey, in the underwater we're, we're basket? We're gonna jump weaving. off here real quick. Do you you guys want to start getting a little taste of what we're talking about here in the podcast? Because the podcast we keep it basic, right? You want to start getting a little more hors d'oeuvres, a little bit more nibbles, right? Little nibbles. Just join our, our free face, one of our free face. Facebook's groups, go to salesrevolution.pro, go to salesrevolution.pro. There'll be a link right when you join, check your DMs. We'll have somebody on our team, uh, one of my uh, stunt doubles or Matt surrogates message you over a free training called the NEPQ 101 mini course. We allow anybody from the podcast yep. through that. And even some, it's a list of different NEPQ questions you can ask for different situations. You, we give that a to you. starter. A little, a little appetite. We give you the hors d'oeuvres here and then you get a little appetizer. Give you, give you like a little chicken nugget, little chicken nugget, not the APAC, we give you a little one. Okay. And <laughs> then, happy like meal. That. And yeah, then yeah. Uh, not the happy, <laughs> not the end. And then uh, in the Facebook group, we go live in there three to four times a week, different Q and A's, different yeah. trainings. And look, you want to start getting more advanced training than that because those, you know, freebies will help you some, but you're not going to like 10X your sales like yeah. our clients do. You just message us in there. And you can always learn more about our different training programs for your specific industry. All right. So salesrevolution.pro. Matt, thanks a lot. Go have fun with your family at their house. I'm going to get out of the office. I'll see you soon. Awesome. All right, guys. Bye. Hey, guys, if you enjoy these, here's another you can watch right over here, right over here. Join our free sales revolution group. Click the link below. Join us and we're going to help you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you real soon.